As long as there is hope, the search will go on. That is the promise of the Chinese Premier, no less. But even with all the resources that the superpower is dedicating to the cause, the fate of the Malaysia Airlines flight remains unknown. And every day that goes by, theories that might have seemed initially outlandish start to appear plausible and worthy of consideration. When hope is all you have, anything is worth clinging to. The arrivals board in Beijing simply says that flight MH370 is delayed. The truth is, it has vanished. We are deeply saddened this morning with the news on MH370. Malaysia Airlines confirmed that this flight, MH370, lost contact with Subang Air Traffic Control at 2.40 a.m. this morning. An international search and rescue operation begins immediately. We're working very closely with our neighbours, um, especially with uh, China, Vietnam, Philippines, Indonesia, where we have uh, uh, requested assistance first on information of whereabouts the planes may be, and secondly, if there is a need for uh, search and rescue, which we cannot cope. The Chinese, fearing terrorism might be the cause, tighten security at their airports as it becomes apparent that the passenger manifest for the flight has two anomalies on it. An Austrian called Christian Kozel and an Italian, Luigi Moraldi. Neither men boarded the plane. It is quickly discovered that both had had their passports stolen whilst in Thailand. When we checked on it in our system, it came back that this is a stolen passport. So we contacted the person to who the passport belonged. Um, this is a person living in Austria. He's safe and sound. Uh, police talked to him. He confirmed the story that, yes, indeed, two years ago, uh, 2012, on a trip in Thailand, his passport was stolen. Malaysia Airlines has 15 Boeing 777-200 jets in its fleet. It is one of the safest aircraft in aviation history, capable of flying long distances on two giant engines. Even if one fails, the plane should keep flying. The Boeing 777 aircraft took off from Kuala Lumpur on Friday evening. It was due to land in Beijing around six hours later, following a route that would take it along the eastern coast of Vietnam. It had been in the air for less than an hour when contact with air traffic control was lost, close to Vietnam's To Chu Islands. It was there that the search was initially focused. More than 20 aircraft and 40 ships begin searching the ocean for any sign of the plane. Early efforts focus in on an oil slick spotted between Malaysia and Vietnam. For waiting loved ones, the agony of not knowing has just started. And I've got a three-year-old who's asking when's Daddy going to Skype. And we've, we've, he's got a map on his wall where Daddy plotted where his dad's going to be. And, and so, you know, he looks around and he says, when's Dad going to Skype? Will Daddy be there? When will he Skype? So, luckily he's with friends at the moment, but I, you know, I will cross that bridge when I have to cross that bridge. <laughs> The search operation is by now clutching at straws. The debris spotted by the crew of a Vietnamese Navy plane is initially thought to be an interior door. It turns out to be another false lead. We confirm that our uh, search now has been extended to even wider uh, um, areas because there is the possibility, we're looking at the possibility of an aircraft air turnback in which case uh, different locations will have to be identified. The search in the vast Gulf of Thailand and in the South China Sea is now extended to an area covering hundreds of square miles. There is a suggestion that the aircraft might have turned around, so they begin to search the other side of the Malay Peninsula and on the land on the peninsula itself. 48 hours on, with hope dwindling, there are still no concrete leads as to where the aircraft might be. The search intensifies. More ships and aircraft join what is now a multinational hunt. The Philippines orders naval assets to the region. 
aircraft from Australia head to the sea between Malaysia and Thailand. <laughs> Once more, relatives of the missing passengers are told there is no news. The Honourable Prime Minister used the word perplexing. We are equally puzzled as well. Short of anything else, the false passports are still the strongest line for the investigation. Two suspect tickets were paid for in Thai Baht, but issued to two men who were not on board. The passengers in their place were booked to go from Kuala Lumpur to Beijing and then on to Amsterdam. Do they look Italian and German? I think this is a security matter. Let the authorities uh, uh, investi investigate uh, the claims and also uh, let them come up with a report. Foul play is still not being ruled out. If it is terrorism, and we don't know at all that it is yet, but if it is, it's going to be a real wake-up call to a region that thought that was other people's problem, mm. not theirs. Pilot error remains a theory, and yet there was no mayday signal, no urgent request for assistance. And why no debris? Why the complete loss of contact with air traffic control? It can happen because pilots are taught to prioritise their tasks, to aviate first, then to navigate, and then to communicate. So if pilots are busy, they won't speak to uh, air traffic control. So difficult is it to accept that a plane can simply disappear that some have chosen not to? Until there's proof, if Philip is dead, I, I refuse to believe it. Of anybody that could survive something like this, it's him. I mean, he's such a fighter, and he has so much to, to live for. Commercial flights continue above the Malay Peninsula as the search area is expanded further still, now well beyond the projected route of MH370. Finally, there is a breakthrough. The two men travelling on stolen passports are identified as Iranians. One, a 19-year-old with no known connections to terrorism. It is now believed he was trying to claim asylum in Europe. We believe that he is not likely to be a member of any terrorist group. And we, uh, we believe that he is trying to migrate to Germany. Interpol named the two men as Puri Noor Mohammadi and 29-year-old Delavar Saeed Mohammed Riza and confirm that they boarded the plane using the stolen passports. We know that once these two individuals arrived in Kuala Lumpur on the 28th of February, they boarded flight 370 using different identities. Search teams now switch course completely and begin looking at the western side of the Malaysian Peninsula, the Malacca Straits, one of the world's busiest shipping channels. The reason for the change is that the Malaysian military say that they tracked a plane there on radar at around 2.15 a.m. in the early hours of Saturday morning. That's around 45 minutes after the plane vanished from air traffic control screens. It is possible that the plane changed course around Kotabaru over the east and flew at a lower altitude as it turned back to Subang. The airline has listed pilot error as a possibility and that theory gains momentum when Australia's Channel 9 broadcasts these pictures of the plane's co-pilot, Farik Ab Hamid. Mid-air on a flight in 2011, he allegedly allowed passengers into the cockpit and, it's now being claimed, was smoking in there. Malaysia Airlines says that it's aware of the reports. This news will only increase the anxiety, though, there is no news whatsoever. It's just disappeared off the face of the earth. And if we could just find some wreckage or something, would be a help, probably. But not this. The mystery of MH370 is growing ever more confusing by the day. Doubts are now starting to emerge over whether the Malaysian military did actually pick up a signal from the plane well off course to the west of the Malay Peninsula. Also recorded were the pilot's last known words.
We've handed you over to Ho Chi Minh Air Traffic Control, Kuala Lumpur told them. OK, received. Good night, was the reply. That was at 1.30 a.m. The plane was never heard from again. Another theory gaining credibility is the possibility that the cabin depressurized and the pilots lost consciousness. The aircraft will continue on autopilot just as it's doing right now, turning on to this heading, the one that they pre-selected, staying at the same flight level and burning off fuel. It's got 3,000 miles worth of fuel on board. It would take it to about the middle of the Indian Ocean. As day six dawned, so did fresh hope. Satellite images taken three days ago seemed to show smoke rising from the ocean south of Vietnam. Search teams are dispatched to check it out. But like so many leads in this investigation, this one is quickly dashed. We deployed our assets but found nothing. We have contacted the Chinese embassy who notified us this afternoon that the images were released by mistake and did not show any debris from MH370. Reports from the United States that the plane could have flown on for more than four hours have also been dismissed. 26 ship and 25 aircraft are searching the South China Sea. Across the other side of the Malay Peninsula on the Straits of Malacca, there are 17 ships and 15 aircraft in the hunt. But the sense is that the focus has shifted again back to the last known location where the seas are shallower so if the wreckage was found, it would make retrieving the black box a lot easier. We don't know where that aircraft is. It's a complete mystery at this stage, as uh, previously described. Until we find that, I think you'll find many of the people are going to be incre increasingly frustrated as time goes by. Other than covering thousands of square miles of open sea, the authorities are really no further forward than when they started the search almost a week ago in the hunt for Malaysian Airlines flight MH370 and the 239 people who were on board. Alistair Bunkle, Sky News.